Hi everyone, this is Doc LG. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video intends to cover the high points and low points of chat GPT in an academic setting. One of the current AI global trends nowadays is chat GPT. It is an artificial intelligence that can help anyone to acquire the most adequate solutions instantly and it is regarded as the most powerful intelligent chatbot used globally and it is expected to evolve its newer versions. AI existence is seen and understood as being created to enhance human intelligence and is useful in various applications. It can be accessed by everyone with a few requirements or restrictions, fortunately. Along with its excellent benefits, however, are detriments that undeniably occur. Without further ado, let's begin discussing the high points of utilizing ChatGPT. Let's check it out. Primarily, it enhances DQ or digital intelligence plus improves one's digital competence, instill easy adaptability of its upcoming versions and other technological advancement. Next, it is universally accessible and free to use. This can be used by everyone capable of acquiring IT infrastructure such as mobile phones, laptops, mobile internet, or Wi-Fi, etc. Consequently, it has an impressive capability to understand and translate between different languages quickly and accurately. Thus, it can address people's language barrier to communicate effectively. For instance, those who are in the field of international business or cooperation or partnership that needs client interaction. It is also an advantage for jobs that require high intellectual and quick mental processing that aims for efficiency towards short time bound completion. It is often said that it's a good learning supplement for students with disabilities and useful for those students who are in remote areas. As a latter group especially might not have access to some resources available for those who are in urban areas, which can be attributed to socioeconomic issues as well. It is also claimed that it serves as an AI-powered tutor that provides individualized learning for students based on their weaknesses and enables them to learn at their own pace. It is effective in subjects that undergo deductive reasoning, which generally uses existing information, knowledge, or facts to derive a valid conclusion, such as mathematical equations and scientific formulas. Subsequently, it is a great advantage for professionals. ChatGPT addresses efficiency in a particular task that needs time limit or immediate completion, such as drafting emails, proposals, job descriptions, marketing presentations, and strategies, lesson plan for teachers, conceptualizing content, and other paperwork, depending on the needs of any professional in a particular field. Furthermore, it provides suggestions or recommendations, which unfortunately might not always be applicable. So you need still to apply your critical thinking skills to distinguish which one is suitable or needs restructured to be applicable. It can suggest trends, concepts, or strategies for resolutions. Lastly, it stimulates curiosity that can enhance curiosity intelligence. While ChatGPT has limited capacity, this sparks more of one's curiosity to extend learning to other resources. We will talk about credibility, ethical considerations, and integrity of users momentarily as one of its low points. While ChatGPT enhances digital intelligence and inspires curiosity, it lacks emotional intelligence which is regarded 
as the highest form of intelligence necessary for individuals' future career life success. This is shown by the way we manage our emotions in different situations. It may be at work, academic, social or real life encounters, special towards others, and promote learning conflict resolution plus a win-win remedy to resolve conflict. Active listening in the classroom and actual social interaction nurtures emotional intelligence where one can put in empathy, intellectual accord, and opinion-based interaction. These are some of the things that you can get by relying on ChatGPT. Next, efficiency versus effectiveness relating to the usage of ChatGPT manage for jobs that require quick manual processing that aims for efficiency towards time-bound completion or hasty jobs. However, being efficient isn't an affirmation of being an effective person. ChatGPT is characterized through its accessibility and an efficient source of information, but this could be misapplied by students through copy and paste lack of realization for current societal relativity or analysis, and time management misinterpretation in place of creative work. In this scenario, effectiveness the ability to acquire a quality education in a varied and interactive instruction, of which is not only a fact-based but opinion-based. It should promote critical thinking, creativity, societal or real-world awareness, and analysis which is not only a fact based but also real world scenarios. In the same way, ChatGPT is not a tool for authentic assessment to both teachers and students. This is based on a teacher's criteria for the students to provide actual evidence that the latter group retains what's being taught, such as teacher made questionnaires, essays, journals, portfolios, documentaries, interviews, etc. And then, it's not a suggested source for competition or culminating activities as they are authentic assessments and that should be created by students, well thought, well researched, organized, and structured. Especially when creativity, authenticity, and insights are one of the criteria. Therefore, teachers should have some applications to detect AI-generated work. Subsequently, it doesn't inspire enhancement for soft skills such as creativity, critical thinking skills, situational problem solving, and decision making skills. Primarily, if the Bloom's taxonomy creating is on the top level, of which students are expected to design, construct, develop, author, and to investigate. Next, lack of integrity of the writer and work. Since not constructed by the person, it can't be claimed for ownership, authorship, and awards. Lastly, it does not follow ethical principles in research. I guess everybody knows that ChatGPT generated resources are prone to plagiarism. One question that I have in mind is that if personal information are interviews, transcripts, newspaper articles, statistical analysis, and interpretations are primary resources, and secondhand information such as cited topics of authors and reviews in a research and books are secondary resources, to which category does ChatGPT fall? Ultimately, ChatGPT is recognized and understood to enhance human intelligence and is useful in various applications, of which some of these are enhancement of the DQ or digital intelligence, universally accessible, and great tools for professionals to carry out work efficiently. This can also inspire curiosity that can enhance curiosity intelligence since it has a limited ability. It provides a broad array of suggestions and recommendations instantly in respective fields. On the other hand, in the academic setting, ChatGPT should not replace students' academic responsibilities and should not affect or divide the cultivation of necessary soft skills that they must acquire to be potential future-proof individuals that can stand the test of time or long-term success. 
emotional intelligence or soft skills aren't instantaneous as the way we find answers steadily from ChatGPT. It is not merely on online and factual aspirations, but of the world around them. Creativity, critical thinking skills, situational problem solving, and decision making skills. Furthermore, it's not a tool for authentic assessment to both teachers and students. It's not a suggested source for competitions or culminating activities. Lack of integrity of the writer and work as well as it doesn't follow ethical principles in research. Everybody has its own opinion about this matter and it's an interesting topic for academic researchers who want to explore this in the field of education. Salamat! Paalam!